Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pulsar channel. I'm Chris and today we're going to be taking a look at our new plugin, Poseidon. Let's check it out. So what is Poseidon exactly? It's basically our faithful emulation of a well-known console EQ. This console was well known for being used with artists such as Elton John, David Bowie and even Queen. It has a super unique sound and a very unique EQ at that. So with that said, let's dive into what this plugin does. So as you can see here, this is the plugin. Now a unique feature was that it didn't have rotary controls for the gain. Instead, it had vertical faders. In this case, they're horizontal. Now, as you can see, we've got four faders here, two of which are peaking bands and the other two are shelves. And beside each gain, you've got the frequency control here, but you may notice there's actually no Q control. And that's because there wasn't one even included on the console. But here at Pulsar, we like to include a few additional modern features that you might not have necessarily found on the original hardware. So we've included things such as mid-side control, as you can see here. We've even included the ability to solo bends by holding shift to allow you to make even more precise moves when you're EQing. So on the original hardware, it would actually have a stepped frequency control. Whereas on this, we've included the ability to have a free moving frequency control. You can actually go into the controls here and you can see we've included step gain, stepped frequency, as well as a stepped high pass and low pass filter. If you go into the frequencies, you even have the choice of half steps to be a little bit more precise, or you can just leave it free and pick as you choose. So one of Poseidon's key features is actually the on-screen editor. So you can see here, instead of changing the gain and the frequency separately, I can click on one of the bands change it as I please. And this actually makes it really quick and easy to dive into your EQ. This also gives me quick access if I wanted to change a band to be specifically for the sides or the mids or both. So a unique feature about the original EQ is that it had really unusual curve and band interactions, which actually made it a bit tricky to learn. This is why I've made an accurate emulation of this EQ, but with the right modifications to still keep the original mojo of the hardware EQ, but with a softer learning curve and a bit easier to use. Let's actually listen to what the CQ is doing, check out how the bands interact and see what we've got. So I've got a piece of music here that I've been working on. Let's solo the drums and just see how this EQ actually works. Starting off, let's use the high mid frequency to add a little bit of body to our drums. Quite like the sound of this. Next, let's go to the high frequency shelf to add a little bit of sparkle. And we can actually experiment with the sides or just the mids. But I think for this I'm going to keep it on both. Next, let's use the low mid frequency to see if there's any low end we can remove. But actually, you know what, I actually quite like the sound of this 300, so I'm going to keep a bit of that. And lastly, let's use the low frequency shelf to add a bit of heft to our low end. That sounds great. So there you go, you got a quick idea of how the CQ works. You can see we're using the horizontal faders to add the gain to our EQ and then using the rotary knobs to actually pick which frequency we're using. Now I do wonder if you noticed how each band actually influences each other. It's very subtle, but let's check it out. So to give you an example of this, say I take the high mid frequency and I pull it all the way up. Now leaving the low mid frequency at the gain of zero, I'm just gonna move the position and you can see how the high mid frequency is actually changing its shape quite a bit. And this works both ways. If I pull this back down to zero and bump up the low mid frequency, move the high mid frequency around, you can see it actually influences the curve quite a bit. So with the combination of the two, you can see that there's actually quite a bit of interaction going on with the shape of each bell. So this is something to consider about how this EQ works and definitely makes it a unique feature about how this actually sounds. Now we can actually dive into the drive section. This is super fascinating. Let's check it out on the guitars. So first of all, the drive control is basically what would be the input gain on the hardware EQ, but this automatically compensates the level, so you're getting the saturation without necessarily getting the boost in volume. Now, we've also got these two additional modes. This first one is the Trident mode, which actually emulates the original circuitry of the EQ hardware. And this produces a rather soft saturation. Whereas underneath that, we've got this, which is the Pulsar drive, which gives the EQ a slightly more modern and aggressive character. Let's hear what this sounds like.
here there we've got two flavors of that drive we have the option to just turn it off if you don't need it but moving on to the opposite side of the plugin we've got the transformer now the original eq didn't actually include an output transformer it just had a really clean input transformer but in this case we've decided to include the option to add one so button one will activate the mariner transformer which is well known for being found in vintage neve preamplifiers button number two will actually engage pulsar's transformer algorithm this will enhance and add some subtle harmonics to the very low end but these are both influenced by the drive control. We can use these in combination with the drive control to really get some tasty harmonics coming up from this EQ. So let's check that out. Let's go back to the drums because I love testing saturation on the drums. Let's move over to the vocals to check out some of the final features about this EQ. Now the original EQ had buttons to activate the filters as opposed to a fader or a knob to change how the filter works. But here at Pulsar, instead we've decided to include a fader. Now this is just a free moving filter, you can just pull it up and down and change it as you please. If you want it to stay true to how the actual filters used to work on the hardware we've actually included in our manual how each certain frequency is matched with the original hardware so you can check that for reference there i'm going to play the vocal in solo and just do some final eqing i'm stuck in the water, water, water. stare at the moon i'm still in the water Checking on you So you can hear there, it's a super musical EQ. However I push it, it just sounds really clean, really smooth, really nice. Just to mention some final features about this EQ, let's check the right side of the screen, where here you can see we've got the scale control. This will actually allow me to take all of the EQ and reduce it equally, all in one move. We even have the auto gain. So if I'm changing the EQ, it will actually compensate the overall gain in volume to keep everything sounding more or less in the same ballpark. Beside that, we have the power control. This is just our master bypass control for the plugin. This is usually best if you want to try to avoid any clicks and pops when bypassing it from the main bypass control. We also have a master volume. If you're not using the auto gain, you can just adjust your volume from over here. And I'm a huge fan of this meter on the side of the screen here. What you have is on the left side, you've got your input and on the right side, you've got your output. This displays a couple different controls. So let's check out how this works when I have the EQ on the mix bus. So you can see here our input and our output are the same because nothing is actually changing on the EQ. But if I start to say drive the top end, we're going to get more volume on the right side and say I do the same with the low end, and do a low shelf. Now you can see we're clipping the plug-in so I can generally pull down the volume to match that. Now, if you've noticed this blue section in the middle, this is actually our difference between the input and the output. So you can see that we're more or less minus three dB lower than where we started. So I can actually push this back up, maybe a little bit down and we'll be more or less at the same volume. So you can use that as a little assistant to make any gain changes. So another thing to note about the meter is it's actually displaying three different types of signal for us. In orange, we've got our RMS, our average volume. In yellow, we've got our peak. And then the two lines that we get are at the top are the peak hold. This makes it really great for referencing our volume. And finally, the last thing I'd like to mention is the toolbar at the top of the plugin. You can see we've got our undo redo controls here. 
a vast collection of presets, our save and save as if we're creating our own presets. We also have an A and a B section if you want to maybe compare two different presets and with a copy button in between. So say I make a move on A, B is different, but I want to copy that move over. I can just press this button and it copies that over to B. I can go back into A, change it up, and then we can actually hear what the difference between them sounds like. Also, if you're changing presets and you want to lock a certain parameter, you can just click on that and actually lock that specific parameter so that it doesn't actually change. Beside the A and B modes, you've got your toggle visible racks. This actually allows you to hide the graph or just to hide the bottom section of the EQ or keep both of them up if you want to. And lastly, in the drop down menu, we've included controls such as oversampling, where you have the option to have real time or offline oversampling. We've also included the step gain, stepped frequencies, and stepped high pass and low pass, as well as general support, the user manual, online support, that kind of thing, and our socials. And lastly, the about section for the actual plugin if you want to see what version you're running. So that's about it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to know what you thought about the plugin. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more. Once again, I've been Chris, and you guys have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one.